From Suva, from Bolivina, from Australia. Vinaka, Vinaka Vakalevu, Bulvinaka, everyone. Kiora, warm Pacific greetings to you all, especially those of you logging in from Aotearoa, from New Zealand. Vinaka Vakalevu, Sarah, for adhering to our humble request to join this very special Talanoa session on this beautiful Monday evening. I've started a motivational Monday session on my uh, platform, uh, especially during this COVID-19 uh, lockdown time, uh, you know, in Fiji, plus also different uh, countries around the world, um, and uh, allowing our people to still tell Noah through the social media platform. And uh, it's really lovely to see you all, most of you who are online. Uh, today, uh, when uh, we shared our poster, uh, there was a number of uh, requests coming in uh, for those who wanted to know how to log in. So if uh, this is the first time for you to jump on this Talanoa uh, with Dr. T uh, platform, welcome. Welcome. This is a, a safe space uh, for Talanoa and sharing. And uh, this is a space for uh, motivation and uh, encouragement, you know? So we really need to be uh, positive and be uplifting uh, during this uh, uh, pandemic, eh? this particular time that everyone is going through uh, wherever you are logging in from. And so tonight is a very special night, as you all know, with the poster, and that's why you are listening uh, right at this very moment. Uh, we are connecting from Hawaii uh, straight to Aotearoa, uh, to the beautiful city of sales and uh, we have a uh, our guest speaker today i know most of you have uh, seen him heard him uh what else have hung out with him and uh, he's a really awesome um hard-working very creative uh gentleman um from fiji and uh we have uh, on our program tonight uh, the one and only Darren Kamali. Bulvinaka Darren. Yes, uh, Nisan Bulvinaka, Dr. T. Thank you for having me on your program. And uh, yeah, thanks to everybody who's tuning in at this moment. Yes, uh, 
Pinaka, pinaka. What's the weather like in uh, Auckland, uh, my brother? Yeah, as you can see, yeah, so I'm between uh, Jay-Z and uh, Hoodie. Yeah, it's getting a bit cold over here. Uh, but uh, no, it's all right. Yeah. Yes, uh, you're getting used to the weather there, eh? I feel you, my eh? <laughs> yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yes, we uh, like for agreeing to uh, share this uh, platform tonight, just to tell Noah and uh, share a little bit about um, uh, some of your recent achievements, um, especially in the field of literature, uh, the field of creative arts, you know, into poetry and all that. But before we go on to that part, uh, maybe we should go down memory lane, uh, which I think will take us back to Suva. Um, and if you can be able to, you know, introduce yourself to our audience. Some of them have already known you. Uh, maybe they don't know that little bit that connects you back to our beautiful city of Suva. So over to you, my brother. Just uh, share a little bit about your Wuvale, uh, your upbringing uh, back home in Fiji. Oh, you're in Istanbul, Vinaka. Yeah, neither go there in Kamali. Oh, Suva, my CWM hospital, my Waimano Road in Suva, 1974. Yeah. And uh, uh, Susu my Sambula North, my Tumbo Street, 27, 27 Tumbo Street, uh, Tinka Bakikia, Gao Toki my Ke in Islandi, uh, uh, Susu Vatke Nangu Vasu, uh, my mother, mother side, uh, Tonakoro, my uh, Bamba, my Levuka, or the uh, original Kamalis came through there. And uh, yes. but uh, yeah, it's on, normally from Malas and Fortuna, neither Nayada ni Kamali, Kamali, mm -hmm. echo my Zavu, my Wallace and Fortuna, my great grandparents from my mother's side. And uh, you know, uh, 17 years old, came to Aotearoa, and um, you have been here about 29 years in uh, October this year. Wow, yeah. And uh, right? someone from my grandmother's side. Um, yeah. Because my grandmother's mom was someone, and the skeleton and the fruit, and yeah, and so yeah, and the Kamalieli and the Fale Lavaki was from the Wallace Futuna side. You, oh, but um, yeah, yeah, so it's good, always good to be telling knowing like that, and I guess that's my connection to to Serikali, uh, mm. the roots of it. And uh, it's only when I came to Aotearoa that I found mm. out, oh well, Serikali found me, you know, poetry found me here, and that's how it all started mm. as well. For like. The career around poetry and poetry writing performance. Oh, Sarana, oh, Vinaka, Vinaka Valevu, Darren, for sharing your hey, your heritage with us. I think it's very important. Dora Kambimbi, eh? No move a mother taka na na boniko sudukina, CWM, Otalanga sudi CWM. So Kendaru, eh, su 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 so which school did you go to for primary? Um, uh, primary and secondary? school I went to Marosuva Street, uh, uh, Maros Brothers Primary School, Hidaki Aesuva Street in Turaki, uh, eight years there, and then I uh, went to Cathedral for one term. Gengoni Daikya, Gengoni Yetsin, secondary school. So my grandfather said, okay, you better go to Yetsin secondary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when we went to Yetzin, and uh, oh. back in Kapitu, we then came to New Zealand. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm sure that none of that part, and I live where Navarro, they were like, it's, uh, that sounds familiar, because, you know, <laughs> some of us at some point, especially that age, you know, uh yes, yes. you know, a little bit of, uh, a little few dongs on the head, yeah. but I'm That's sure right. you... Uh, back in the straight and narrow. What was your experience like, um, uh, you know, going to school in cathedral at that time? Um, it was good. I mean, I made a lot of friends as well. And um, I guess because my grandparents were Catholics and we grew up Catholic. So uh, that's why I went to Maris Brothers and I went to, yeah, cathedral for, for a term and then went to Yetzin. But um, yeah, mainly my grandparents grew me up in, in Tumbo. And um, we stayed in the barracks because my grandfather was a soldier in the, the Royal Fiji Military Forces. He actually went to Malaya uh, back in the, in the, and then uh, we stayed in the barracks. And then this book, yeah, the, the latest book is about Munimango and me, about growing up in the barracks with the mango tree outside. 
And yeah. so that, that was my grandparents' place. And uh, yeah, so pretty much, yeah, it was sort of real, real Catholic religion, uh, Wallace Fortuna culture sort of at home. And um, and yeah, and really education as well. Because my grandfather is very militant as well. So, and most of us came from broken families. So I had uh, seven cousins who were like my seven sisters as well. So we all grew up together in the same barrack. And, uh, and most of the, the book is based around growing up there in uh, Susumai Sambolo, North Iktumbo Street. Mm. And uh, yeah, most of the growing up there is awesome as well. And then, uh, so you have some very fond memories eh, of growing up yeah. in Samambula. Yeah, so this is a collection of memoirs of, of uh, growing up in Sambul North and um, talks about different characters, uh, people as well. And um, yeah, from uh, from the Vuni Mango and me to uh, to Nana's poetry, to, you know, to the Harry, uh, Harry the grass cutter, to um, Alec, the, the guy who, who drinks kava every day, you know, catches the first bus to town and get, catches it back. But I had to be in such a way, uh, and I, I done it for my, my draft for my master's uh, in creative writing. And uh, yeah, so that was cool. Yes, uh, man, that was beautiful. And also I remember Darren, when I was still in New Zealand, um, you know, you were mentioning how there was some kind of redevelopment happening in uh, Samambula North and there was a risk for your grandmother's uh, place to be um, demolished or uh, um, changed yeah. or something. Can you give us an update about that? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I've written it in my book as well and uh, it's, in the, it's, in that, uh, it's in the Vuni Mango poem. I see. Uh, 1993. Plantations closed down by the American embassy. Every man's state was taken away to clear the land behind the barracks. Ippolito, paralyzed by burden that year, without his plantation and his old age, he never really recovered. Ippolito gone now, 18 years. His favorite spot, right there on that log. He would sit there for hours, cut open a ripe juicy mango and catch that breeze blowing just right from now sorry. You. Uh, wow. The little snippets of poems that come out in, in sort yes. of within that collection of poetry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and speaking of poetry, how did it, um, like, how did this all start for you? Um, you know, with your, your writing and your poetry. And I recall, um, I think at one stage I was in Fiji, I turned on the television and I saw you being interviewed uh, uh, with Fiji One. And that's how I remembered you. Uh, and I recall you had dreadlocks at that time. <laughs> and that, that look stuck with me until I met you in New Zealand. Ranio tal no takamanda, take a wubaza wana no mu marutaka mo kla volobola serkali, va vavalangi, va viti no mulanga sere, kerker, vinak. You um not as any take a wood sara till I reach here, till to I reach to Atero, to New Zealand. It was through the Talatala. It was uh, like a reverend. Yeah. You know, Reverend Moore, Strix and Poor. Yeah. Yes. So I moved from Wellington, from Fiji to Wellington, 92. Straight to Wellington, finished my seventh from that Newlands College. And then I moved up to Auckland in 94. And then I met uh, Reverend Moore, not until I was starting to stay on uh, K Road in yeah. one of the places up there in the apartments. And then I met him. And then it became a course because he's a social worker and, and community course. And so I, um, yeah, I met up with him and he said, oh, there's, there's a course going and it's heavily uh, art and uh, poetry writing. Yeah. And, um, and it's sort of like a therapy as well for, you know, young boys like yourself who's looking for direction yes. and who's, you know, and you look creative because say, uh, 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 and then say, hey, what this? <laughs> what you doing? Are you, I know you from uh, Fiji. I know your gra your grandfather's brother. I said, okay, he said, said. But by the time I looked like it, it was all the gang ran away. You know, the boys knew that he was coming. I look around, nobody was there. It was just me. So it's like, yeah, you better come to the office on Monday. So sign up there. And then yeah, the first three poems was uh, where I was going, uh, where I was at, and where I'm, uh, oh, sorry, where am I at and where I'm at at the moment and my past, present, future. Eh? So where are you from, where are you at and where are you going? So that was the first three sort of workshop. Yeah. And from there, we started writing poetry and songs and um, doing rap 
because his son is a Nigerian mystic as well. And his son was like only 14 years old and he was already rapping and singing you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. And so when you went to that first workshop, um, did the inspiration or did you start, uh, was it easy for you at that time or was it a little bit difficult? And how did you kind of adapt to um, the scenario of being in a new um, space like that? I mean, it was at the time too, uh, I had to pay, you know, I had to pay rent as well. I was by myself. And then if it didn't, if, because I was with Winds at the time, it was like social welfare or whatever it was called. Yes. And then um, it was either go get a job or do the tops course, you know, the training opportunity course. Right. And uh, this was it. And he said, hey, you better come into the course. Otherwise, I'm going to see you again in the next round again. So it was a one-year course. And there was 15 of us from different islands, Maori Talnga, Kaivalangi, yeah? even people from uh, a lady from Cal uh, from Tahiti and you know, mm. just around yeah, the Pacific. So we were called Tour Tour 98. And then we started basking on the streets. Luckily, we go to the, all the you know, uh, schools and stuff like that because more had a connection to being a chaplain and, and also mm. um, uh, so. yeah, a social worker for most of the you know, uh, marginalized youth like myself back in those times. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So you must have really, uh, I mean, I'm really happy, Omaro Saranga, Darren, you know, that you acknowledge Reverend Moore. Um, you know, he's uh, someone who I have met a few times during my time at uh, Creative New Zealand and uh, also had the opportunity to meet up with uh, his son, who was part of the Nisian Mystic Group. And uh, yeah. it was, his, yeah. he, he's such a, how can I describe him? He's got a heart. Uh, for people, yeah. Yeah, Reverend Moore, and yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. I know so, when you yeah. mentioned his name, eh? uh, it wasn't by yeah. accident that uh, you know your paths crossed, and look at where you are now. That's right. And I always, I always acknowledge uh, Reverend Moore because he was the one who said, "So what I'm doing for you now, you're going to be doing for the youth." And uh, you know, when you when you sort of accomplish something, you will give back to the youth, like how he gave to you as well. And so later on, then we formed the South Auckland Poets Collective, and it was sort of like. A, yeah, a tribute back to the marginalized youth that I saw myself as well, and still working towards it too. And in doing those workshops, yeah, I'm doing more learning as well as um, as teaching and, and sort of facilitating workshops. Right. How did the idea of forming that uh, South Auckland uh, uh, Poet Collective? How did how did the idea come about? And uh, how how's, what's the collective like right now? So yeah, it was. Uh, um, the idea was had started from Youthline. It's sort of the youth agency in New Zealand. I think it's a leading uh, youth agency in New Zealand. It's been running for like over 40 years. But uh, they wanted to do something with the South Auckland uh, youth because there was uh, altern uh, alternative education apart from going to school because some of the, most of these you know, students were like marginalized youth from South Auckland, Maori, Pacific. And uh, yeah, so Youthline wanted to pick up this project and it was for, supposed to be for Explore Festival in 2008. So we're supposed to workshop with these 10 uh, youths and uh, on around poetry and becoming spoken word poets and performance poets, artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we use the 10 weeks to do Explore and then we're gonna break up after that and to say that's cool and they can do go their own way. But um, they wanted to carry on with the, mm -hmm. the project. And so, yeah, we carried on. And then, uh, yeah, now it's 10 years later. So um, yes, uh, there's a, a trust that's open under Youthline, which is called Action Education, and they run all the slam poetries, uh, poetry uh, slams in schools and, and uh, yeah, around the country and also uh, into um, Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And they've also entered the international, which is in America, the, uh, the big uh, Brave New Voices that comes out every year. International oh. groups go over, so they're the first Pacific uh, group from Aotearoa. New Zealand, which is, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, we came a long way. Uh, there's 30, 36 poets that has come through South Auckland Poets Collective over the last 10 years. And uh, yeah, they've, they've been doing a lot of uh, good work uh, outside of literature as well as, uh, yeah, in, in the arts as well. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Um, I just want to highlight the, you used the word marginalized a few times. Um, and I know there's, uh, you know, the, there's quite a few people here connecting in from out there on Nimbulevinaka, even some from Australia uh, and some from uh, the UK. 
um, and some from Suva as well. Vinaka Vinaka Vale for supporting our Talanoa with our brother Darren. No, um, no, to everyone here. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, our folks here uh, saying bull and sharing the love. Bula Vinaka Letila Mitchell. Letila connecting in from Australia. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, and look at Rako. You know, Rako also yes. doing uh, something yes. amazing. You know, in terms of uh, education, um, culture, and performing arts. Um, coming back to the word marginalized, um, uh, what what would be? Um, how would you look at poetry um, and kind of connecting it with the uh, you know young people, especially youths, as you said, some of young people. You know, they don't know where they're going. You know. They are maybe 17, 18 years old, that kind of teenage years, and they're not sure of their future. Uh, how did you find poetry to fit in into that kind of the marginalized group that you were part of? You know, they were Maoris and they were uh, Pacific Island kids. Um, when you think about the time that you went in into that first workshop, how do you feel or what do you think about poetry uh, kind of helping that youth, including yourself at that time? I would say, um, yes, uh, yeah, that's a good question to uh, and uh, it's very, uh, it was very, um, for me, I was, it was healing. It was like, I didn't find poetry, it was poetry found me in the form of yes. Reverend, you know, Reverend Moore. And uh, yes, and I think he saw something it was, you know, and when you youth, you 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 know, you got a you young live to my point. You yeah. think you know everything, and <laughs> you can see everything. But he saw, I think he saw something as well. And mm -hmm. I think I was that marginalized youth as well. I mean, I I, I, I don't know whether that's the right term to use, um, as well because um, the other word is at risk, and I don't like that term as well. Uh, it's all kind of words, yeah. you know. That's why I said I was, uh, you know, I was one other. Eh? So yes. one of the indigenous, like, you know, he was not, not that he was a bad boy, but you know, just a a big, not tall boy. Babe, right. I mean, when uh, when when the grandparents not looking and stuff like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it, you know, it, it, it carry on, but um, still, you you can see these people. They can they see what happens when mm -hmm. when I was a teenager and you know, when I grew up. It really helped me come through a lot of my issues as well. Yes. Because there was a lot, there's a lot of things that I haven't published that is just sacred to me. Is my journal, and I write journals and I keep it for myself and some poems that's that's there that's not for publishing, as well. And I do that in my workshops with adults, as I'm working with uh, the rough sleepers here at the moment with the city mission and open libraries. So I'm running poetry workshops with them, and I'll, I'll be sort of publishing some of their works too. And um, yeah, so some of those uh, workshops are pretty sacred in terms of. Uh, and the, the mm -hmm. sacredness of it, not yeah. you know, like to tell know about it after the you know when the, yeah. the, the workshops closed. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we want to put a uh, publication together anyway. It's a it's a sacred place too, and I think that has happened from from way back in our yeah. ancient times as well, yeah. uh, ancient practice as well, because yeah. uh, we were oral poets before we were uh, written poets and published yeah. poets and. Uh, and I approached poetry in that way as well as a performer, as a spoken word artist. I pro approached it for the other way around. Instead of writing to there, it's from speaking to writing. And just saying that as well, I'm thinking of my brother Fiji, uh, George Vekoso. Uh, he doesn't write any of his lyrics. He actually just goes into the studio and he sings it from his, he, he can hear it himself. He can hear the chant, he can hear the the rap, the raga, the, the, all the different voices that comes through, the different octaves of voices. So that's, uh, it's, it's, it's really about the poetry, but it's about, about voicing the poetry is the, I think for me as a poet, that's, that's the main part of it. Uh, publications is amazing just to get people uh, involved and educated around the, the collections of Pacific poetry and, and then being involved there and, and being published is such a blessing for me as well. I don't yeah. take that for granted, but um, yeah. in all in all, saying that, I'll give reference to um, and give reverence to those who gone before yeah. us and who were mm -hmm. orators at their time. In uh, even Epele Ahofa, uh, Hone Tufari, you know all those names. Uh, uh, Epele, uh, uh, John Pule is still alive. I was hanging out with Eagleton on the weekend, who's the current po poet laureate, David Eagleton from Dunedin, and uh, his Rotuman Tongan in Scottish as well. So. 
it was good to hang out with him and, and hear his talano, his uh, about his uh, titoko. You know, every uh, poet laureate in New Zealand gets a titoko carved especially for them. Uh, you know, Selena got hers the last time, and uh, yeah, it's it's sort of awesome to be um, to be known and to be helped by them as well because he edited my book, and Selena was my supervisor at uh, during my masters at the uh, uh, University of Auckland, and so. Yeah, it's been awesome support over the years. Uh, Tarisi from the streets to, to the sky. <laughs> to mm. the uh, and you keep flying and you keep flying. That's Wait, something I see with you, you know? And uh, I think your talent today is going to empower so many people, particularly, you know, our, our young folks, you know, some young ones who uh, may be looking for an outlet, you know? Yes. And yeah. I, I like the word healing. I really like the word healing because it's uh, not only, I think, for young people, Darren, eh? I think also for older people. What do you oh, think? No. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful medium. It's a wonderful platform for yeah, yeah. all ages, you know. And I see slam poetry is awesome for the young ones. It's a great platform for them. And I see uh, storytelling and, and performance poetry and spoken word poetry. I see, you know, uh, even leaders in our country, even ministers and all that. All of us, we speak words, so we are spoken word artists as well. I mean, yeah, spoken word, you know, creators, because we we have to construct our 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 work, our, our talanoa, you know, on the page or on the stage or wherever we are. So it's all about constructing it properly and how you're going to present it. And uh, I think that's the same thing with arts and politics and religion and other things that really um, make a lot of difference to our upbringing and mm. to our life today. Yes, uh... Wow, no, that's that's really awesome, you know, that you are in that space. Um, and also to see these laureates, you know, these uh, uh, poets, you know, who are of Rotuman background and of Samoan yes. background. And, and there, so, you know, laureates here, yeah, far up. So we can aim for that too. So, you know, I'm like, I'm yeah. oh man, you know. And uh, oh, David Eagleton, he's been there for a long time. And, and you know, Landfall Journal was his, uh, I mean, he was awesome a reviewer and critique for poetry and for other creative writing. And it was not until he got into that landfall journal that, that our people started to get in, you know, because even before we used to submit work to journals, and that's how I started to publish uh, to, to publish uh, my work. I mean, I did recording and I did music. I did two albums back in the early 2000s, but then uh, from 2006 when I had my first boy, and Ulmatua, or Sarah Darius, and then I just started going back into uh, poetry writing and publication into anthologies, which started with uh, New Voices by Selena to Stella Marsh in 2006. And then I've yeah, sort of featured in different anthologies up to 2011 and publishing South Open Poets Collective, self-publishing them in 2010 and 2011 self-publishing and getting picked up by Anna Herra. Um, and then our Creative New Zealand had funded that too. So. Yeah, Creative New Zealand is, uh, I have to give them thanks as well for a lot of my work. Um, without them, I wouldn't have done my career this far, the last over 20 years since the streets. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing it for at least 23 years now. Um, and uh, yeah, my advice to the young people will always be, yes, I am flying, I feel like I'm flying and, and stuff like that, but we have to remember that, um, to give thanks to her for the blessings that we have. Yes. And also for keeping our feet on the ground as well, yeah. and uh, not forgetting the roots as well, and and people around us. That's not you know, just to be yeah. conscious about our people around us and ourselves as well as we go as our our tovo hila. And that's why I really love the Itoke and the Fijian way as well. Uh, the upbringing is yeah. the uh, tovo, you know, and the uh, uh, roko, you know. We have to be that respect, that uh, you know, acknowledgement, that uh, going back to the roots and then Vunimango. Is that one for me? Uh, my so, third publication, and it feels good, you know. Wow. I remember you introduced me to Dr. Polonia Tomata. Yes. Remember in, in uh, Rarotonga in Cook Island? Yes, 2010. Yeah. 2010. <laughs> and that, that's when I was just about to uh, launch my first book, uh, 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 Tales, Poems, and Songs from the Underwater World. And then and she said, do you want to, you want to do, you know, translate into Fiji? And that's like, oh, yes, please. And so, yeah. And we're still doing stuff together now, and especially when I'm doing heritage work. Um, it's always good to tell a note to her and uh, get advice. And from yourself to uh, Dr. T, I'm always, I always, you know, in reference and respect to you. And in terms of uh, in New Zealand, uh, somebody I can really go to here in, uh, in Auckland is uh, Auntie Chuana Monolangi. She's amazing too, you know, and uh, 
love for Ali Pate's work with Temana and stuff yeah. like that. So um, yeah, I'm always you know supporting my people here, and, and, and if I'm not there, I'm actually you know I'm I'm still there, and I'm mm. happy for them too. You know, yeah. to give thanks to Ngai. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful. We're not going level four. You know, um, uh, always saving that. Uh, um, you know, you're always someone that loves to collaborate, and I think that's a quality. Um, that uh, everyone who's listening in today, you know, should be encouraged to do, you know, I'll always like to see you working with others, and you are always empowering others. And I think that's uh, a beautiful quality that you have there. And I think uh, more artists, you know, if we go down that path, especially now during this pandemic, uh, you know, if we work with other people, you know, it's healing and it's uh, motivating, yeah, on so many levels, particularly with so many lockdowns uh, that we are involving. And I'm sure the creativity when it comes to songwriting, poetry, this is a good time for it, yeah, to time, start yeah. writing it down. Yeah, and um, it's amazing. Uh, and, um, you know, normally we are, especially in New Zealand, uh, I've met artists from other countries and uh, we are pretty, uh, supported by the government with in terms yeah. of funding and, and stuff like that uh, i mean we don't get as much as we want sometimes but or we don't get it at all but then you know we just like we, we at least we get something you know whereas yeah. maybe the hawaiian artists they might have to go to the pool in the usa and it's a huge pool you know yes. of people to work from like asia pacific and that's that's a big pool alone in the yeah. states or you know, in other parts of the world even in australia yeah. um but um yeah, I just give thanks to how we've been working with Creative New Zealand. And uh, of course, we want to see more development there too. But the Italian Nose you know, as the Pacific summits come along, we, we can open up and do I know, our lineups as well. But you no, know, I'm always, yeah, like you said, I love collaborating. And yeah. um, it's always working with other people that you see another side of something. And, um, yes. and, and even with doing my book, I want to say thanks to Josiah Matewai. I actually talked to him on Facebook. I saw his work uh, and um, I said, can you please, uh, I commissioned the work from him, from him and uh, yeah, he sent it to me and, and then uh, yeah, we used it. It was it was done on tapa. So this is actually a, a painting done on tapa. Uh, so yeah, he was amazing and um, and yeah, and I like his work as well. And just, just doing that, I mean, I haven't met him per, uh, personally, but through the COVID times and all that we had yeah, met and, and done that stuff. So, and mm. yeah, your name comes up all the time with the resources at the library, you know, na Oso Wakaviti, na Roko Wakaviti, na Willy Wakaviti, it's all there still on our shelves. Yeah. Oh, and, um, yeah, and Vinaka to you, you know, for opening up that, uh, you know, um, that door for me. I really want to say Vinaka Wakalevo to you. And I know uh, we have kind of a passion for heritage. And uh, can you just share with us a little bit about your um, connection to the museum and uh, your work there? And also, I know that you and uh, our brother, who, um, that you both came, went to England with um, Mayava, yeah. Mayava Ole. So can you tell us a little bit about that and then we'll hand over, go straight to your book. Because uh, I know there's a lot of our folks here who love to hear uh, snippets from your Wuni Mango and I book. Yeah, yeah no, um, Ole Mayava, yes, he's another one of my uh, other uh, brothers in rhymes as well. Uh, he's, uh, we, we're known as the Unregistered Savages of Aotearoa and we do research in, in, uh, and uh, he does all the photography for a, a, a project that we've been calling Ulumate Project. And it's uh, it's about, it's a revival uh, research art project. Kila um, Naidana, revival research art project. Na Arare, eh? Kila? So, not only from Fiji, but this one is for research revival art, eh? But uh, yeah, so um, uh, he does all the photography. That's why we went over. And uh, Ulumate refers to the Uludavu, um, cultural art practice of Fiji, of Itauke people. And I, I always uh, give thanks for that. The first one I ever saw was at, uh, uh, in 2013, when I first started working at the Auckland Museum, the War Memorial Museum. Uh, they've got uh, Ulu, two Uludavus there and uh, one Ulu New. Uh, yeah, so I've been researching around this subject since 2013. Mm. But however, I've been uh, growing my hair since 2017. Mm. So it's 25 years in the making and the project 
and I've been also collaborating. So Oli took all the photos that we had when we when we went to do our research in um, at the Cambridge University wow. of Archaeology and Anthropology Museum, and uh, they have eight in their collection, uh, nine all together, but one is at the back, and uh, that's the most in any any one collection around the world, including Fiji, including the Suva Museum, which has only six, and a few tombes. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm working closely also with uh, Auntie Chowana on this one, Auntie Chowana Monolangi. And uh, this is a yeah, pretty sacred one too. And, and, and through them, the Ministry of Itauke as well in Fiji, because mm. it belongs to the people of Fiji. And in saying that, uh, Apollonia Tomato will be translating all my works into Fijian as well. Uh, for this book so we've got a series of two books coming up and uh, can tell, tell know about that when that comes to that but um mm. uh, ollie is doing a lot of photography and then there will be serikali as well and uh, <clears throat> response exhibitions to those um mm. yeah those pieces so yeah i've been doing that in the last since 2013 going to museums and uh, <clears throat> and other museums researching that as well and uh, also working here at the Auckland uh, libraries as the yeah, pacific mm. heritage advisor at the moment been about four years here in this role and um, yeah and I'm just saying uh, in the last at least last eight years of working in those spaces mm. and uh, the libraries has uh, really uh, broadened my mind and actually taught me more about Fijian history uh, than yeah. I grew up in Fiji and uh, that Fiji has taught me until I came here. So I take the role. Mm. Wow, so the museum, eh? museum and the libraries and the archives, eh? these are um, yeah. heritage yeah. spaces uh, yes. which our people are welcome to to go to, eh, Darren? That's right, yes, it's, and, and it's free if you stay in the area and you're in Auckland and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's the glam sector as a, as a whole. So you've got art galleries and all, all that as well that com uh, sort of complement each other in uh, the work that we do as contemporary artists of uh, of old and new as well. You. Mm, and talking. you just... <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you also <laughs> mentioned on the weekend that you were part of this festival. Tell us a little bit about that festival. Yes, it was the Writers uh, Auckland Writers Festival uh, yeah. on the weekend. And um, yeah, I do. I had a set on Friday night, a 15-minute set, just to present some of my books. Uh, mm. They've always be, have been supportive, so they've pre they printed you know, my white T-shirt, Vuni Mango and Me, the title of my... Um, yeah, I think I could wear it tonight because I overwore it on the weekend and it's uh, dirty, it's brown now, it's supposed to be white. Uh, <laughs> so it's in the wash, but uh, yeah, yeah. And um, we also went to David Eagleton and um, and Selena Tusitala Mash talking about poet laureates and their toko toko that they get wow. uh, when they initiated it. And it's so, sort of different toko tokos. And uh, you tell the Maori um, tong, uh, tofunga, the, the story, the artist. And uh, he will he will carve the the titoko the toko toko they say the Maori si. the toko toko uh, for their men and right. their the backstory so yeah they get different uh, yeah titoko for their oh. thing for words. like a talking stick eh? talking stick mm. and yes uh, and one thing I um, also admire with you too you know you uh, I mean you you get the chance to travel you know and visit other um, other museums and other collections. Uh, what advice would you give? Because I know there's some young people listening in, uh, in terms of looking at your love for heritage, your love for poetry, and it's allowing you to, you know, visit other parts of the world too. Yes, I mean, it's been a big journey from the being basking on the streets of of uh, Oakland City to to where I've come now today. I sometimes I look at it and uh, yeah, pinch myself too. It's say, you know, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's actually always always open to learning and and growing as well you know and then and never giving up is the main thing too you know it's yes. like uh i believe yeah there's a lot of people who are very passionate everyone's dreamers you know we can dream it we're passionate we've got that you know and uh you know we are talented people we've got that too but uh, one thing i lacked as well as a young person growing up and i wish i had it too but which i've got now is uh, discipline and uh, sometimes that's that's the thing that lacks the most in most of our uh, younger people who's trying to uh, um, sort of aim and uh, have goals and plans mm. to yes to to be in this in this area of work. Mm. And uh, I mean uh, a lot of artists and a lot of uh, practitioners and uh, scholars and academics make it look easy, 
mm. but it's actually not uh, easy at the end mm. and uh, yeah and then but it's always been good to, to sort of yeah work towards whatever i didn't mm. go back to school until i found poetry in, wow. in saying that you know so uh, and then i met uh, robert sullivan who is the uh, award winning poet as well maori irish uh, he started off the, the creative writing school in manuko uh, institute of technology where i did my bachelor's of creative arts yes. and creative writing so uh, he was the one who got me back into studying after 15 years um, after I've done music and, and sort of yeah, other stuff. And then I yeah, started back in 2011 and then yeah, done my master's in 2015, 2016. Mm. And um, yeah, and I mean, yeah, my, my real advice is like, if I can do it and uh, I'm from, you know, I'm from the barracks in Tumbo Street, Tumbola North. So if I can do it, man, <laughs> anyone can do it. And I believe that, you know, <laughs> I believe that. I always tell my young people that as well. You know, I come from Uma, I'm 50 and I'm 17, you know. I started off on the back foot, you know, you guys are, you know, Lulu to go again. You can grow up here, you know, you know the culture, but uh, I guess it's different, you know, I mean, it's easy to say. But uh, yeah, I will never, uh, I will never forget my roots. I'll never forget uh, the Tumbo Street. And, uh, and, 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 yes, yeah. wow, always, Totoka. Always, always Totoka. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and I can't wait to hear your, some uh, of the, the reading from your book. And uh, I think if I can just, um, summarize some of the key points you mentioned there, you know, you're always open to learning, um, never give up. And uh, the other one is, you know, be a dreamer. And for you, you know, you dream, you have those plans in your head. But one thing I like about you, Darren, you know, you always uh, deliver in terms of uh, action. And then also with the publishing of your work. And I think that's a big lesson for all of us. Um, as you mentioned, you know, we come from a line of orators, a lot of our uh, chants and songs are sung. Uh, a lot of our speeches are, you know, uttered through salutations and through our ceremonial um, activities. But I think now that we're living in this uh, new modern age, you know, that uh, we're living in the uh, Kaivalangi world, maybe I can say that, um, yeah. publication is uh, something that is encouraged. And so I think Nakawuli uh, Mevik or Darren is, uh, um, you know, we can live in two worlds or more than one world. Eh? Uh, so I think that's one takeaway um, I get from you today is to encourage our artists and our families who are listening tonight to start writing. Yeah, let's write our stories and let's uh, yeah. Yeah, record our uh, talent. Um, yeah, and it could be in, in and, the form, uh, different forms, you know. Yeah. So start writing and recording, yeah, just like how uh, our fellow Kaivalangi yeah. or non Fijians would encourage us to. Yeah. 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 Definitely, uh, Dr. T, yes. Mm. Yeah. And I normally do co collaboration with uh, Leva Nivosasi, uh, Boini Nahinga Toka. He's been here for ages. He's a percussionist. So he brings in some sounds and then we, we've we been working on Huni uh, Mango and Me, so we're getting ready for our launch to Wellington uh, oh. on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's, he's been good. We, we normally hang out and, and do stuff together. Wow. But uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, can you do a little promo about your book? So for those of you who are uh, uh, joining us today, um, he's going to tell us a little bit about his book and uh, we will be blessed for him to um, share with us a few of uh, his poems for all of us. And there's a launching on Wednesday. So maybe after your uh, reading, then you can tell us uh, what to expect on Wednesday. Okay, then. Cool. Yeah, thank you, Tarisi. Uh, um, the book, yeah, Wuni Mango and Me, uh, it's published by uh, Cover Bowl Media, uh, Two Samoan Brothers, uh, also a professor at the Auckland University, Damon Salesa, he's also a, a book, uh, he's got books out there, and, uh, and John Tapu, who does uh, multimedia TV uh, camera stuff. I want to give thanks for them as well, for um, uh, believing in this project, uh, Wuni Mango and Me. Um, it's a collection that that's really um, that's really uh, that really identifies with Fiji and the upbringing, especially in Suba and uh, the barracks there. 
and uh, also not just uh, limited to Fiji because uh, Bonyo mango is all over the Pacific, including Hawaii. Mm. So um, yeah, Bonyo mango could be anybody's Bonyo mango, and uh, me could be anybody me out there as well. So, but this one is for Bonyo mango and me, the one I wrote uh, mm. for growing up in 27 Tumbo Street. And I dedicated to my grandparents because uh, they actually brought me up uh, before coming into Aotearoa when I was 17. And uh, yeah, they are pretty well acknowledged in the book. So uh, I'll read you several poems, okay. a few poems. Yep. Um, cool, lucky. Okay. Uh, Huni Mango and Me, the Mango Tree Collections, uh, dedicated to Nena Emma and uh, Papa Ipolito. So we'll... Huni uh, Mango sits on the front yard. We sit together. Blessed family home, home to Nana Emma. We prayed together. We prayed together. What should happen when Nana Emma goes? I will miss Nana dearly. Thou shall not forget, because Ippolito will do too. We used to fly kites together. What has happened to the children nowadays? Where has the tropical sun gone? The Samambula North spirit gone? Where is the brown skin? Where is my brown skin? Harvest season, fresh kakana, papa stay tay, papa on his typewriter, yummy lovo, buried not so deep in the vanua. Saturday, kana, my white tui, kuita, ika, ngari, lumi. My heart long for one last day with my nana, Emmeline. Miss how close we were, we are, how we're supposed to be, aunties, uncles, families. No matter how extended we may be, hey, you know, we all related. Can we be like that forever? Miss those laughs, my cousins, spread out across the world. Jokes with nephews and nieces nowadays, all grown up and moved on. My eyes crave one more night of sleep on your sitting room floor, 27 Tumbo Street. One more night around the Tanoa, Talanoa on the back porch, smell of mosquito burning re red hot green coil brings back fond memories. One more afternoon of cool breeze under the Vunimango, sipping on a young coconut mbu, like Ito Keisei, eat its flesh, fresh for the strengthening of the mind, body, and spirit. Drink its kavinaka, just one, one more golden moment, last box of Fiji gold for the bros. One more bowl of Yangona, one more night of Nana's prayers, no more fight, no more worries, neighbors speaking, Fijian English, top of their voice, would like to hear that again. Clapping hands, laughter songs, stories of Wallace and Fortuna, Villa Maria, Mid Road, do not go there, grandson. Papa Ippolito's voice filled the room, filled tranquil space. Bunimango, in my heart, follow me overseas. Seeds born and grow, my routes, my roots, leads me home to Bunimango. I shall never forget where I go, whatever I do, there shall we always be. Bunimango and me. This is a few I can read. How long have we got? Just a couple more. A couple more, yep. Uh, this is all our <laughs> listeners here. The Nakova Levu, Tulia Seru, Maria Teringa Moto. Thierry, William, Christopher. So they're all uh, listening here and uh, enjoying your Willy Boala. Go for it, my brother. I'm enjoying this. Thank you, guys. Naka. Like I said, I use a bit of percussions and a bit of chant. This one about, you know, Nakulida, eh? Nakulida. Do Kachena Tamata. This is the one for them. This is one. Koli. Koli, Koli. Koli, Koli. Koli, Koli, wild dog Aki, sharp teeth, aggressive smile, growling eyes, dripping tongue, black spots, sharp claws, Aki climbs, Vuni mango, Aki bites, anybody, everybody, no one is safe, not even family. Aki was never scared, always made his bite count, snuck in the house once, hid under the dinner table, and bit Grand Nana Vanna on the feet, on the foot. No boundaries, that dog. Fierce as a wolf, cunning as a fox, razor-like teeth. Be careful, he will sneak up on you and rip your pants off like he did Shahida from Maharaj place. Make sure to call out before you're coming up that hill. Aki smells 
uh, Aki smells fear from a mile away, like a Kai Simba Kola, a cannibal. He loves the taste of human flesh and blood. He will bite you, whoever you are. No one is safe unless you're Auntie Angie or Nana Emma. Koli, 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 Koli. Koli, 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 Koli. <laughs> yeah, so something like that. And my young boy has already memorized that poem. And yeah, he's, he's going to perform that as well. Beautiful. <laughs> See all the memories. Eh? <laughs> you know those little dogs. Even I was scared of the dog, man. So, oh, uh, most of us remember all those dog moments. I'm sure some of us have some of those coli, eh? There's a lot of laughter coming yeah. through. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, the like you, you know? yeah, so. <laughs> so this is all about yeah, Tumbo Street, 27 Tumbo Street growing up there. I know there's some of them here in New Zealand and even in Hawaii and around the Pacific and in Fiji. I, I hope they, you know, they're listening in. This is all for them. Um, so it, it's memoir poems, you know, so um, speak from the heart kind of thing. And, uh, and also sometimes it's very hard, but not, not too easy to write memoirs because, and I guess you will know you'll piss people off as well because they probably want it, but they want stuff in there. But um, this is written through uh, like a 12 year old boy who's who has a, who's getting ready to come to New Zealand at mm -hmm. 17 so it's written from like when I was 12 till I was 17 sort of that kind of eyes and, and the characters that I saw in Suva even like bottle boys one is called Botala I should read Botala eh? yes go about for it bottle boys in uh, okay so this one goes bottle boys yeah Botala Botala the bottle truck turns the corner beeping its horn skinny Indian boys hanging off its side yelling Botala, botala, white knuckled show offs, breeze by, seti, seti, 50 cents a dozen, Fiji bitter empty bottles. That's how we earned our pocket money. Adults were always broke, never stopped them drinking though. Hell, never had gifts on birthdays, a $2 sponge cake from Samambula cake shop, butter and sugar to make cream and a church candle. Lucky we had food on the table. Creative entrepreneurs we were from an early age. Every bottle made sense. Plastic bottle don't sell though. It was used as rugby ball. Gago, master bottle collector, fell off the seawall once. Bangara botala tiko, looking for bottle. Broke his shoulder blade. Spending money meant collecting and selling empty bottles. Milk bottles, 20 cents a pop. Big Tavaya, Coca-Cola, 15 cents. Small botala, 10 cents. Botala boys, that was us. Marasuva Street kids, down by the seawall. School uniform, looking for empties in Nambukulu Creek. Shoeshine boys near Suva post office, polishing shoes like mirrors, empty botalas by their side. W-E-E-S, wheelbarrow emergency squad, outside Suva market, $2 a load around the market. They too had their collection of empties. Taxi and bus drivers collect botala too. In the barracks, adults drink tank like tanks and kids collect empties. Hibiscus Festival, a, ha a haven of, uh, for bottle collectors. Wherever Taki was happening, there was paisa to be made. Keep an eye out for empty botalas and watch your pocket. It's just evoking so much memories. See, yeah. there's so much laughter coming through. We're not going to with everybody. Eh? Yeah. Botala, botala, yeah. botala. Yeah, most of us will remember that. <laughs> hey, how's the coli? Hey, the dog there. Hey, you're the... <laughs> Put away, you can hear the, the bottle truck. Eh? Ding, 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 ding. Botala, botala, botala. <laughs> So yeah, man, we uh, uh, maybe maybe a couple more, just a couple more. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You can. And this one's for my grandmother, anyway. It's a bit. So excuse me if I get something in my eye. Okay. This is for my grandmother. Um, yeah, she is Nana. Yeah. Mm. She is Nana. Tears fall like silver rain, sleepless nights, countless rosary beads between withered fingers, freshly lit candle burning on the altar. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Pacing the front yard, step by step, 
bead by bead, as hours disappear, sorrowful mysteries, Hail Mary, full of grace. She has witnessed children bearing babies, unknown fathers, generation what next? All she ever does is pray, God have mercy on us. Jobless, violent, fathers, loveless, desperate, mothers, sorrowful mysteries. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. She refuses to go, saying not yet, growing older, watching grandchildren grow, great grandchildren grow to have children. The cycle continues, untold stories unfold. Nothing good comes out of the barracks. I came back to visit Nana, to sit under that Voni Mango with her one last time. For this is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So yeah, Nana passed away like uh, 2019 and yeah, she, she was amazing. She was instrumental in uh, wow. my upbringing. And, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, that was really lovely that you can write those beautiful poems, uh, you know, in in her memory, and that's uh, really really powerful. And even some of the listeners tonight, they've just uh, responding to your performance, and they're saying you've encouraged them now to write these stories too. Mm. Oh, wonderful, man! That's, that's awesome. Mm. That's great to hear. Thank you so much, Therese. Yeah. And thanks for your forum. I mean, I, I watch it. Uh, all, you know, it keeps me going as well, and I love how you, you know, you preserve our culture as well in our own ways, you know. And I wanted to mention before, yes, I'm a Kailom as well, and it might be a bit more easier for me to, you know, to work mm -hmm. on both ends of the spectrum. But yeah, yeah for Itoki, there's there's a place for you guys, and I will always give thanks for that too, and for the Tangat Fenua here in Aotearoa for bringing mm -hmm. me up, you know, to who I am today. So both mm -hmm. countries has really contributed to our, who I am, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe one last one. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Go for it. Toss up. This, this one is a cousin song. So it's a cousin mm -hmm. song. It's to my cousin. It's got a little bit of rap in it. And uh, mm -hmm. sort of, uh, yeah, I hope you like it. Eh? Done. My cousin, my cousin, my cousin. Yeah, yeah. My cousin, my cousin, my cousin. Yeah, yeah, me don't know how she does it. It's a wonder she don't lose it. No father, no job, eight babies. Me don't know how she does it. It's a wonder she don't lose it. All is on. Allison, Alice, Bella, Scissors, Palace, pushing on strong, maneuvering between the cracks. Nighttime spaces would make anybody cuckoo. She makes it look easy we don't know how she does it it's a wonder she don't lose it by the basin every night muddy waters flow from the below cup hands clap in the porch in the dark whispers and laughter heard early hours of the morning tumbo hill to the slope of matuku ears ring plotting schemes cupped hands rhyming rhymes punchy lines too smooth just cruise plotting show you won't even know one of a kind takes a time fast thinking kids sleeping music jamming on the radio me don't know how she does it it's a wonder she don't lose it me cousin me cousin me cousin yeah yeah me don't know how she does it it's a wonder she don't lose it response to me cousin song me cousin overseas earning degrees don't know what it means to have eight Babies in the mix, no father, no wins. Me father oversees, me cousin oversees with his fancy poetry, lavish job, minister wifey, while we still living up the land and the sense that we scrape together every week. Me cousins think he knows me with his me cousin, me cousin, me cousin, yeah, yeah. Me cousin oversees, don't know how me do it, me to slide it to lose it, me cousin, send me currency, please. Otherwise, me cousin, take your two cents piece. And me cousin, me cousin, me cousin, a yeah, yeah. Me cousin, me cousin, me cousin, a yeah, yeah. Me cousin, me cousin, me cousin, a yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. So, so. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you. Wow, oh, thank you so much, Darren, for empowering us and reminding us the power of language, 
uh, the power of expressions, the power of memories. Um, and I think that's something that we all learn from you. And uh, yeah, we're so empowered on so many levels today uh, in terms of how you've encouraged us to value our voices um, and value our own stories. And that's exactly what you've done. Uh, from all of us, um, Rowena Rooney, uh, not mm, Rowena. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some, 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 yeah. <laughs> some, some queen saying one bro, one yeah. bro, as well as uh, our Rotuman sister, beside to Solomon, Naka, beside to Neil, for always there. So, this uh, amazing support uh, here for you tonight, uh, Darren, even our friends from Fiji, Nakavaka Levu, we communicate in a semantic maviti. Really appreciate uh, uh, the time uh, for joining me and Darren to tonight. Eh? So for the launching on Wednesday, tell us a little bit about it uh, for your book, uh, Darren. Yeah, I mean, I've launched it already at the Pacifica for Auckland. Uh, oh, so, and, uh, okay. at, at, at the Cover Bowl Media. So it's online, it's available online. Okay. Uh, anywhere. So www.coverbowl.media.com. Uh, but at the moment, we are launching it in Wellington at the uh, Unity Bookstore. So it should be available in Unity Bookstores from this Wednesday in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, and just shouting out as well, we were trying to get it into USP and Fiji. So if anyone knows any links or stuff like that, just if you could get in touch with Dr. Tarisi and, uh, and she'll get in touch with me or, or get in touch with me on my messenger on Facebook. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Vinaka. Yeah. So for those of you listening in, if you want a copy of the book, there's been some interest even before our interview started. Some people are asking. I told them, just wait until um, we do the Talano with Darren uh, and he will tell us where to go. So there's a couple of choices here. You can go to the Cover Media. Uh, is it Cover Bowl Media? Cover Bowl Media. Yes. Cover Bowl Cover Media. Media. Okay. Cover Bowl Media .com. You can go to their website. And you can uh, purchase a copy from there. Um, yes. And yes. also... And if you're overseas, they will sort it out too uh, with the uh, calculations with the um, freight and mail and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so that will include the cost for selling it, eh? Okay. Okay. Oh, but it's 20 bucks a book, yeah, New Zealand, which is, uh, yeah. Oh, which is good. Yeah. Okay. I really always, uh, yeah, I respect and admire your work. And... Um, yeah, it's awesome work that you're doing that side, and I'm, I'm following that as well. Yes, uh, you're most welcome. Really appreciate it, and uh, same bullet to the family. Uh, also, not forgetting mom. Uh, we send our loma uh, to her as well, and we wish you all the very best, Darren, with uh, your mm. launch in Wellington. Uh, for our Wellington uh, family, uh, definitely you can get in touch with Darren and support him uh, for the launch in uh, Wellington. So for all of us here in Hawaii, uh, we just want to uh, say Vinaka Wakalevu to you, Darren, for sharing your talano with us. So many of us, just uh, our friends here, just saying Vinaka to you. And we really enjoyed your performance. So we are really, really blessed that you're able to uh, share uh, your talano with us tonight. Wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, everyone, for listening and supporting my work. Love you guys. God okay. bless. Yes, Naka. What about Darren? Naka Valevu. Naka. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, for those of you listening in, uh, we just completed our talano with uh, Darren Kamali. Uh, he was sharing his uh, launch of his uh, book, uh, Mango and Me. And uh, it's dedicated to him growing up at 27 Tumbo Street in Samobula North. Eh? So what a wonderful way to remember uh, his grandmother and uh, his grandfather who both of them brought him up in Fiji uh, when he was 17 years old and he moved over to Aotearoa. Eh? So again, acknowledging uh, Darren and the amazing work and the support um, from uh, uh, his wife as well, um, uh, Madam, uh, the Honorable uh, Kamel Sipuloni uh, for the amazing work that she does for Aotearoa and supporting uh, Darren and also the other artists who have called Aotearoa their home. Wonderful support um, from Creative New Zealand who've always uh, uh, given the support for uh, uh, our artists for all types of art. You know, you've got performing arts, you've got uh, uh, spoken um, word, uh, and the list goes on. So if you go to the website of Creative New Zealand, 
dot gov dot nz you will see a lot of uh, funding opportunities for those of the artists who are based in new zealand um, and uh, the forms are also online everything is all digitized so if you're looking for funding um, to help you launch your um, you know music uh, cd or publish a book or run a workshop creative new zealand is the funding agency for you to go to um, the staff in Wellington and Auckland, they're very friendly. And if you want to ask any questions, uh, there we have a Pacific staff senior uh, funding advisor, uh, Makarita O'Reilly. Yeah, so Makarita O'Reilly, she's of Samoan heritage. And if you need more information, you can go online, send her an email and uh, you can set an appointment with her and she can be able to help you, uh, guide you, on how you can apply for those funding to support you um, in publishing or uh, you know creating of, um, your CD, anything that you like. That's amazing about Aotearoa, the support it gives to our um, artists. Okay, so from me uh, in Hawaii, just want to say Vinakabaka level to all of you uh, for coming along tonight and supporting Darren Kamali. Vinakabaka uh, level to all the artists who are here tonight. Uh, and all the brothers and sisters who always support Darren and our staff at the Auckland Museum, as well as the Auckland Libraries, uh, where he actually works. So, Vinakabakalevu from me, Sawakumwadeni Bekemuni, until our next Talano session, Nisamwademata.